From the time that we're born and for the rest of our lives, there is one skill that we're never taught, but one that we need to use every single day. Working with others, teamwork, and we've all been part of a team, whether that's your team at work, being a part of a sports team, being in a family, or even being in a relationship. These are all teams. A team is simply a group of people working together with shared goals. But what happens when our team at work is causing us stress? What happens when our sports team can't seem to win a game? What happens when the family can't cooperate? And what happens when we're constantly arguing in our relationship? The truth is, when our teams aren't performing the way they should, we don't know what to do. But what if we did? What if we knew exactly how to build better, more high-performing teams? Well, let's examine the number one threat to high-performing teams. Did you know that the number one sign that an employee is about to quit is the same as the number one sign that a marriage is at risk? That sign is disengagement. But what does disengagement mean? Disengagement means less effort, less communication, less collaboration, and less commitment. But hold on. Effort, communication, collaboration, commitment, aren't those the signs of a high-performing team? And so a high-performing team is an engaged team. So the question then becomes, how do we build more engagement on our teams? Well, a team is a product of its environment. We adapt to our environment by adopting the behaviors that we're surrounded by. So if I were to put you on a team where everybody's grumpy and miserable, how long would it take for you to become grumpy and miserable? Or at the very least, disengaged. But if I were to put you on a team where everybody's happy, hardworking, high achieving, don't you think that you might put in a little extra effort because the team environment shapes us. But if given the tools, we have the power to shape the team environment. And there are five things that an environment needs for engagement and peak performance. For number one, for the parents in the room, have you ever tried to tell your child what to do and they do the complete opposite? Why won't you make your bed? Don't you want a clean room? Meanwhile, the child is thinking, why are my parents so hung up on me making my bed? Like, I'm just gonna get back in it at the end of the day. What's the point? And have you ever argued in your relationship and the other person's point of view is not making any sense to you? Girlfriend is talking about her feelings and the boyfriend is talking about logical actions. And the two of you are just not understanding one another. But the truth is, until you understand your team's strengths, weaknesses, and perspectives, you will always be working against one another instead of as a team. So number one is an environment of understanding. Now, for number two, how many of you have ever heard of Paint by Numbers? Paint by Numbers is a painting template where you're told exactly what to paint, what color to paint, and where to paint. All the decisions are made for you so it's not very engaging or creative. But then on the opposite end of the spectrum is blank canvas painting, where you have complete autonomy to paint whatever and wherever you like. But a blank canvas staring back at you, well, that's quite overwhelming. But then there's paint night. And if you've ever been to a paint night, painters come together to work on a specific painting, and they're led in a general direction by the lead artist, but they have their own canvas and the ability to make their own version of that painting. This, this is the most engaging situation for painters and for teams. It's called supportive autonomy. And supportive autonomy means that team members have the adequate amount of support, but they also have the autonomy to make their own decisions. And so on teams where all the decisions are made for you, where there's full support but no autonomy, like paint by numbers, team members will find themselves disengaged. But on teams where there is no support but full autonomy, like having a blank canvas, team members will find themselves overwhelmed and not know what to do next. 
but where there is a balance of support and autonomy, team members will find themselves most engaged. So number two is an environment of supportive autonomy. Now, for number three, how many of you have ever held the door open for someone who walked right through it and didn't say thank you? Did you whisper under your breath? Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> because you didn't have to hold the door open for them. You went above and beyond. And the least they could do is recognize you for that. The same is true on our teams. When we're constantly going above and beyond, but yet we're overlooked and unrecognized for those efforts, we can't help but think, is it really worth it for me to continue putting in all this effort? But what if every time we held the door open for someone, we were met with a smile and a thank you? What if our contributions at work were met with a thank you so much, you really made a difference here? And what if our contributions at home were met with a thank you so much, I really appreciate everything that you do? How much more likely are you to continue going above and beyond then? because a person who feels appreciated and recognized will always do more than what's expected. So number three is an environment of recognition. Now, number four is good leadership. Teams need a good leader. And a good leader provides three things. So if you're wondering if you're a good leader, ask yourself these three questions. Does my team feel respected and heard? Do I provide clear direction and purpose? And do I inspire my team by setting an example of the values, behaviors, and attitudes that I wish to see? Leaders, this is your responsibility. Number four is an environment of good leadership. Now for number five, the highest performing unit in the police service is the tactical and rescue unit otherwise known as Special Weapons and Tactics, or SWAT for short. And SWAT units are highly equipped and trained to, re to resolve high-risk situations. So after I spoke with an active Canadian operator, I discovered that within the SWAT unit, operators are separated into small teams. And those teams have significant team cultural differences. Team culture is related to the values of the team, it's largely connected to how you feel as being a part of that team and what your team cares about. So, although all teams operate according to organizational standards, the teams with the best performance metrics, highest mission success, best training statistics, are those with positive team culture. They display characteristics such as high emotional intelligence, a collaborative, not competitive environment, and high personal accountability. Positive team culture is critical to peak performance. Number five is an environment with positive team culture. So the next time you find yourself on a team that's not performing to the best of its ability, don't blame the people. Instead, assess the environment. Because with these five characteristics, understanding, supportive autonomy, recognition, good leadership, and positive team culture, you have the power to build better teams. You have the power to shape a better tomorrow. Because with the right environment, anything is possible. Thank you.